Hi, I'm Ashley Swank. I played the fortune teller in Stab 5. I knew Josh from working at Chili's. We had a whole crew of us and we all sort of got parts within the film and uh, Josh cast me specifically as the fortune teller because I was the weird one. <laughs> Playing the fortune teller was actually kind of fitting because I was pretty well versed in being in magic shops and I have a ton of crystals. I actually had tarot decks at home. So it, it really worked well for me to just kind of step right into the role. So we get there and we walk into this beautiful crystal and magic shop, Myth and Maiden, and uh, it was gorgeous upstairs and then like okay so you can film in the basement and we get down there and it is just black carpet black walls heavy bright lights <laughs> and i was like how is this gonna work and i could see josh he's scrambling in his own head trying to set up a table to make it look pretty authentic and we're sitting there and we're all looking at each other like this is gonna be weird <laughs> But somehow it worked. It was odd, just more so because I had a hard time envisioning how it was gonna look through the camera, because we were in the basement, and I recall the lights being a lot brighter than I thought they should have been. So I was kind of like taken out of my, my headspace a little bit, just because I was like, how's he gonna make this work? How's he gonna do this? And not to mention being in the basement, I was like, you know, it's no crystals, it's nothing down here. It's a dark, empty basement. And uh, somehow, somehow Josh actually made the lighting work. Um, the finished product was a lot better than I thought it was gonna be, which it was a pleasant surprise. I remember they let us borrow one of their absolutely beautiful velvet cloaks and they were like, you can't get this dirty. So I'm like, okay, so I'm dying. There's gonna be fake blood. We can't get anything dirty. We can't get blood on the floor. We can't get blood on the rental cloak that we are using. I wasn't fully prepared with my own costume that I kind of brought. I just had like scarves and stuff all over me because I thought I'd be wearing a cloak the whole time. So we get to the death scene and there's blood and I'm like, I can't actually do anything because I can't get blood anywhere. So I just sort of like awkwardly just like fell off the side of the camera shot. <laughs> it somehow worked. I was just in like plain clothes under it because I thought I was going to be wearing the cloak the whole time. I wasn't really prepared with a costume under the costume, which we didn't know until after the fact that I was going to need. <laughs> I think we all went in there having an idea of what it was going to be. And then we were completely thrown through a loop. And we're like, just Tim Gunn, make it work. <laughs> I had like a scarf that I had draped in my lap to catch anything because I'm like, well, we can't, we can't even get one drop on the floor of this empty room with a black carpet. Don't get any blood on the floor. You know, we might use this room for something. <laughs> <laughs> we did get to film upstairs at some point. Um, I think I was being interviewed by a detective and I had an earring and I just sort of walked around the shop just like, just adjusting little trinkets. So, I mean, the store did get a day of work out of me because I walked around and I did all of their facing and I made their shelves look gorgeous. So yeah, they, they got they got some work out of us. Well, I tried to make it look like I was actually working there and not just having it as a backdrop, but you know, this is my store, so I have to make it look good. But I remember when I watched the scene for the first time in the movie and I had to sniff the earring and Josh had dubbed like a sniff sound over it. So it was like, <laughs> watching that because oh yeah I mean it was completely unliked so we did have to sort of enunciate clearly and and uh, I mean none of us really knew what we were doing but at the same time um, Josh's excitement of the project kind of got us all involved and by the time we all got there we were all pretty invested in, in what was going on and yeah it's 
He was so excited about it. I mean, how could you say no to that? <laughs> You're so invested in the things you do with like your books. You, you wrote several movies. I mean, who does that in their free time? And so it was sort of like, okay, we have to say yes because like we have to help this, this friend see his idea come to fruition. The only person there that I knew was you and uh, Chris who ends up being our killer. So there's two girls I've never met in my entire life. And I, I went there thinking like, I'm gonna do a, this accent. And then I got so choked up because I'm like, oh, this girl, I don't know. And she looks like one of those cool girls that would have never have let me like sit at the lunch table with them. And I just got so clammed up. But she ended up being really nice. Everyone there was really nice. <laughs> like, I remember she had to get really freaked out at her card reading. And she's super committed. I mean... Stephanie, yeah. Yeah, she's... I'm still in my head going like, how the heck are these lights gonna work? This is way too bright for a tarot reading. But she was like, into it. And even Chris, he was into it as well. I mean, I, I actually felt like they were angry at me for a minute. And I'm like, whoa. They are I'm like... Just, I'm just a nice little tarot reader. I want to address my death scene. All right, let's move on to your death scene. <laughs> Talk about it. So, my death scene, um, we had to set up this rig, but of course everything was not what we had expected it to be when we got there. So, I had this little hose tucked between my finger and I was just holding it to my neck and Josh was behind me with like a giant syringe just like shooting blood out of it. But again, couldn't get any on the floor, couldn't get any in the costume. So I'm just like holding it like awkwardly, trying to let it just dribble down. And then I just like fell over dead. Cause it's like, what do you do? You can't move. And so, I mean, that was, it was interesting to say the least. Um, Cause in my head I had thought like, okay, I'm gonna do this whole like death thing. And then we get there. <laughs> so we did use a real knife. Um, Chris had to swing a knife at me, which um, I was a little scared at because my role mainly at Chili's was to expedite, which meant I just screamed at the kitchen staff most nights that I was there. And he was kitchen staff and I'm like, oh God, my nacho guys might actually take this opportunity to kill me because I have yelled at this poor man hundreds and hundreds of hours of my life. <laughs> but here I am. He didn't kill me. I mean, other than the fake blood, everything was pretty real. It was a little scary. A little bit. Oh yeah, I mean, because you're in your head, you're thinking like, okay, so I'm just gonna let this guy swing an actual weapon at my throat and hope for the best. I, I believe he was standing behind me for my death scene too, and it's like, so, I mean, had he not calculated that angle right for the camera, I mean, it, he wasn't that far away from my actual skin with a real knife. It's what we do for the craft. <laughs> uh, the best part was just seeing how it all came together. Um, it was fun showing up, kind of getting thrown through a loop, because you show up thinking, oh, this is just gonna be another humdrum day, and then all of a sudden we are in the basement of a magic shop, really making the best out of the situation, but you're doing so with a bunch of other people who are also going through that with you, so it was, it was kind of nice. It was, it was a fun day. In the end, it was, it was well worth kind of getting through that. And seeing the, the end product when it was, uploaded to YouTube and you're like, oh, the lighting did work. <laughs> and I'm not sure if it was like filtering or if what went on, but I mean, and the magic shop, walking around it felt kind of natural. And I mean, the fact that everything worked in the end, it was, it was interesting to see just the final cut. She well, it is real. I mean, the entire time we're filming, we got someone at the counter, like just staring at us, making sure we didn't break anything. It did have an essence of reality to it because it is a real shop that actually exists with an owner that actually cares about their merchandise. Customers walking in and out, and didn't they have a bell on the door? So it would be like mid shot and hear ding, <laughs> and Bill's smacking against the glass of the door. <laughs>
<laughs> a couple cuts. I mean, you get a couple box trucks driving outside. You pick that up on the cameras. It's, yeah, it was, it was interesting, but we made it work. I mean, I swear you could be in the middle of the woods without a road even near you and like a jumbo jet will fly overhead just because you have to get those sounds on camera. <laughs> Every time something goes wrong, it's nine times out of ten something that's completely beyond our control. Or, you know, like, oh, we just got a massive snowstorm and our set won't be melted for another six months. Patty, her scenes, she's like walking up frozen staircases and... Yeah, I remember snow being an issue that year. <laughs> a lot of frozen cast members. I did like it. It was enjoyable. Um, Josh does have experience as a writer, so it felt it felt more natural conversation. Whereas, you know, sometimes you sit down and, like, if I were to sit down and, and try to write a character, it would feel very blocky and not natural. And like, who would ever talk like that? But the script had a flow to it that felt real. Um, I, try, I think I stayed mostly on the script, but it, of course there's a little bit of ad-libbing because I'm not a professional actor and I have not memorized any lines, but I knew the gist of what I was supposed to do and the more, more important cues of the script, so we, we did stay faithful as, as much as an unprofessional first-timer can. I think the only comment I actually ever read um, was on the Facebook page. Someone said I looked like Lindsay Lohan, and I was like, what? <laughs> I've never heard that before. But yeah, I've uh, I've heard. I'm a longtime fan of Graham Norton, and uh, all the all the people on the couch say, don't read the YouTube comments, and I I didn't. People also forget like we're not paid, we're not professionals. I was a waitress at a Chili's when we made this in school to be a phlebotomist. There's nothing in my resume that would scream actor. Um, so, uh, we're people, we're just normal people. Like just, this was just the thing we were doing for our friend and we had a good time doing it. But yeah, people do tend to forget like, this isn't a million dollar budget. Right. This, we didn't have a budget. Like, there was nothing. None of us got paid one red cent to do this. It was just... Well, I want to, like, reach my, my, my hand into the internet sometimes and just be like, you go out with your friends out in the woods or just about town and make something better. But have it actually cohesive to something that actually kind of tangibly already existed. So, the, the Stab movies if I recall correctly, were the series of movies that they are actually watching in the Scream franchise. So the fact that we had someone take this millisecond of a, of a real Hollywood motion picture and roll with that idea and make several movies that have actual tangible storylines that fit in with a made-up universe, I'd love to see anyone try to do something better. Uh, the worst part was um, just what you build up in your head. Like I had this in my my head, this elaborate death scene, and they basically tied our hands with just like we we can't we can't misplace the one drop of the fake blood. So just yeah, having our hands tied that way, and it was I think I think everyone felt a little disappointed because. We all had read the script, we all had this idea of who our characters were, and then it was like we get there and the shackles got put on. And, uh, so, it, that was a little disappointing. So I loved the, uh, the finding out who the killers were. I loved that big reveal. And uh, finding out it was, it was Chris the whole time, and was it Steve? To find out after the fact, I mean... Did you guys, you guys didn't know who the killers were when you were filming? I only knew because I filmed with Chris and he put the mask on to kill me, but I didn't know if that was actually the killer or if that was a, just a stand-in for the day to have him. So at the end of the movie when I find out, oh no, that really, he really was the killer. Because yeah, I didn't, I didn't entirely know. Okay. I only got a couple pages of the script that had my dialogue in it, so I didn't even get a full copy. Much, much like how they do the Marvel films, where just the actors get just their little part. Um, but yeah, I 
I kind of had assumed in my head that Chris was just a stand-in for that day because we didn't have enough space to have a whole production there. And then, yeah, he really was the killer. It's like what Roseanne did when they replaced Becky. That's Shannon in our yeah. movie. She's our Becky. That's yeah. so funny. That's what we call her. Yeah, <laughs> she was totally the Becky. And just like, I hope you guys don't notice this is a completely different person. I mean, they do that all the time in Hollywood. They just replace an actor and don't give you like any sort of reason. They don't even acknowledge the fact that they did it. They're like, surprise. I get to keep it. It's a stab five ah! script book. <laughs> oh my. And I'm... Oh, this is fun. I never thought I'd be reading these again. I know. <laughs> I thought this would be so much fun. Oh my I know what you are here for. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shannon. I'm here to... I know what you're here for. Yeah, right. Prove it. Devious glare. <laughs> <laughs> You seek answers to the questions of your future. Yes! Of course! Why the hell else would you come to a fortune teller? Doobie, if you don't like it, leave. I'll behave. Yes, you will. Do not fault him. He acts out of fear. You don't scare me. You don't fear me. You fear your future. Ooh, chills, boo. <laughs> um, can I please go first? Yes, my child, you may. Palm reading or tarot cards? Both! <laughs> Forty-nine fifty. Please pay first. I love this bitch and her money. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that forty-nine fifty. That is like in today's money. That's like ten bucks. <laughs> cash only. <laughs> I forgot about that too. Damn, I'm low on cash. Bought me a twenty, and I'll hit you back for this bullshit. No, no, no way. Please, fine. Thank you, babe. Wow, this is more talking than I thought it would be. You better pay me back. Not like last time a week ago when you borrowed money from me for dinner. Never saw that 20 again. Or like that time two weeks ago when, please, can this wait? We're on paid time. We'll begin with the tarot cards. Ready? Yes. Ah, good fortune. You will find love, a man with dark features. <laughs> Maybe she does know what she's talking about. Ah! <laughs> what? Jeez, what? What was it? It was the ripoff card. You are not safe. Death. And I'd say you don't have long days, maybe. Ah, no! Girl, seriously, it's not real. Even if she could really see the future, maybe she's talking about the movie. Did you die in Stab 5? I've only seen the parts of the script I'm in. Look at still typos, even in oh, book form. <laughs> I don't even have a full copy. I don't want to die in the movie or real life. Maybe we should go. Listen to my warning. I'm telling you, death is approaching and soon his cold hands will be wrapped around your throat. <gasps> you are a vicious fortune teller. <laughs> you have another one in here though with uh... Uh, yeah, like later. With Mandy's character, Dylan, here. Let's see if I can find that one. Uh, I, this, I have more on the next page. Do you really? It's when I'm handing the earring back, but it's like one line. Oh god, I remember this scene when I, you're all in grave danger, yes. and I'm like reaching out to them. Oh yes. Ah, grave this was supposed danger. To be outside. <laughs> we should just have oh, just yeah. be going, grave danger. <laughs> The face after was so perfect, too. You were so in it. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then your earring little thing. That's so funny. Oh, my goodness. I don't know where that is. Though. It's page 31. It's just one line. Oh, and then there's one more line on 32. So we have Jennifer with you. You forgot this. I knew it was yours. <laughs> Iconic. I don't even have a name. I'm just fortune teller. Hello? Is anybody here? Yes, I'm right here. <laughs> wow, you move quietly. How do you do that? What questions do you seek answers to? I'm not a customer. Oh, sorry about the whole ritual of things here. Halloween through Christmas are my biggest weekends. I normally sell everything that isn't nailed down. I'm lucky the chairs are still on the floor. <laughs> so, this is all fake? What, are you kidding me? There's no such thing as ghosts or the supernatural. It's a franchise, and from October through the new year, a lucrative one. I was hoping you could help me. Do you recognize this girl? 
Lady, do you know how many girls have trotted through here in the last three days? I'd recognize a wallet before a face. <laughs> Actually, you're in luck. She does look familiar. Yeah, she was in a few days ago with her boyfriend and another girl. She got the death card, poor thing. Scared the shit out of her. <laughs> yeah, and she was just murdered. Wow, I think that's my first prediction that's ever come true. Did you make it come true? Are you insinuating I killed her? If you are, you're out of your mind. I wouldn't dare leave this tent right now. I'm here 24 hours a day for those who want to glance into their futures. Nothing would get in the way of my cash flow. Capiche? <laughs> <laughs> this is so Boston. It's so right? <laughs> <laughs> you said her boyfriend was here, Chris Doobie? Yeah, tall guy, thin, dark features. Cute if you ask me. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> and you're sure you had nothing to do with her death? Of that, I am positive. This is really oddly written. <laughs> <laughs> well, in this book I'm reading, the fortune teller turns out to be the killer. Honey. Basing your police investigations on a Nancy Drew novel makes me think you would be the kind of girl who would come see me during business hours. Meaning, you're an idiot. Are you even a real cop? You look very young. I... I have to go. <laughs> I'm good at reading people, honey. That's what my job is all about. I love that. I love that your character got to be, like, Miss creepy. Sassy. Yeah, and then you see the real lady and you're like, alright, bitch. <laughs> Thanks for your time. <laughs>